YouTube, it's your boy Ronald Wins for Not Lead Podcast. The greatest and the latest of all the colors, aka Platinum with no features, goddammit, you fat bitch. And I'm back with this real shit. Alright. So I was on Facebook. Usually that's really what I do now that I'm just sitting at the fucking house. Chilling. And I come across this old clip of Jeff Hardy. <laughs> And I'm going to call this Jeff Hardy. But I'm going to just elaborate why I am calling it that. And it's like his old highlights and shit. Like he's jumping off ladders. He's jumping off the top rope. Now, those of you that are a fan of wrestling know that this nigga Jeff Hardy don't give a fuck. He crash burn, get shot, flip three cars, and motherfucking rob a crackhead and get caught with a DUI for the second time in the same week. I'm being real with you. He's really shot out like that. But at the same time... Why I'm calling this Jeff Hardy is because I remember times in my life where I was scared of shit. You know, I didn't want to do certain stuff. I was like, oh, I don't know. And, you know, you be double dutching on shit. Like, <laughs> one of if you should really go in with shit or really, you know, follow through with shit. Like, okay, I remember the first nuclear plant job I went to. I'm pretty, I think it was, um... Nuclear plant McGuire, I want to say. Right? And my homeboy, he got me into this business and shit. And I remember how it felt driving that far for the pulling the application. I was like, man, I don't know. And my homeboy was like, bro, don't worry about it. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? And it's funny how one decision you can make can, can affect your whole entire life. If you just put aside the fear that you have. And just go for it. Like, that's what I mean by Jeff Hardy. The nigga don't think, the nigga don't think half the, you know, don't think about half the shit he does. He just jumps and goes for it. You know, regardless of the result. Now, I wouldn't tell motherfuckers to do no shit like jump off the top rope. That's stupid. <laughs> don't be that damn dumb. But what I am, but I, what I do admire about it is he's a risk taker. He doesn't mind putting himself on the line. He doesn't mind taking a chance. And that's what I mean by this whole thing. Because, like, that one decision to go to my first nuclear plant. And I remember how that whole shit went. Like, the guy hired me instantly because I had military background. I just got out of the Navy at the time. I think it might have been that. Might have been September. Yeah, it was September. That, you know, the guy just hired me. Now, then to make a long story short, me and that guy don't talk no more. The motherfucker pissed off at me because I left and moved on to some bigger shit. So fuck you. Um, but nah, like the first opportunity I got, you know, with the nuclear shit, passed all my training, passed all the classes, you know what I'm saying? Because I've been taking online tests for so long. In the fucking Navy, I got used to it. And I only say it like that because the shit used to really irk my nerves. Every time I turned around the Navy, it was some new shit we had to do on a goddamn computer. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being extra. But, nah, for real, for real. Right? The guy hired me. I ended up going on night shift, working at an ice cream Man, let me tell you, some of the worst work I've ever done. The cold. I'm in this big ass jump shooting shit, dropping this big ass drill down into this big ass motherfucking cage, busting up ice for. Two, 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 three hours at a time. Excuse me, stuttering. You know what I'm saying? And I remember how that experience was. But at the same time, that one decision I made led to me meeting all these other people, connecting with friends in the industry. I've made some of the most money I've made in the past two years than I have in the past eight. The nuclear industry has been good to this nigga. All right. But the fact of the matter is, the more money you make, the more problems you have. And I, I don't think I was ready for the how to regulate my money at the time, same time. Which is why I'm broke right now. On the shit. What's another one? I remember how I felt going to the goddamn Navy. When the recruit I, I still do I remember the motherfucking recruiter's name? Hell no, I don't remember his name. This has been 10 years ago. But I remember the motherfucker, he was a short ass white dude. You know what I'm saying? He used to come to the house and yeah, we can go to the Navy instead the third. I still got the picture in my mama house. You know what I'm saying? I wish I could remember that motherfucker's name, but I don't. Um, but yeah, I remember going, I remember him, I remember how that whole shit started. Like, 
I got in the car with him June 14th. Yeah, I think June. Yeah, it was like it was like June 14th. Whatever. Rolled all the way to Hinesville, sat in our office with them motherfuckers, not knowing I was getting set up for the RKO with this fucking bullshit with the military. But it was a choice I made. That one choice affected my life for eight years. I remember how I felt going through boot camp. Boot camp was hell. But at the same time, looking back at it, it was a necessary pressure I had to go through. But I wouldn't be the person I was today if I didn't make these decisions. Like... I remember everything I did to motherfucking have my first kid. <laughs> Boy, was that interesting. The first time I met my baby mother face to face, we snuck off and it probably, it probably couldn't have been no more than two hours later we went and fucked and fucked raw and had a kid. Like I probably got her pregnant the same weekend I met her. Stupid as it sounds, stupid as it sounds. That shit happened so fucking fast. <laughs> I look back at it now and it's just like I be looking at my daughter I be like you wasn't supposed to be here <laughs> and, but it's like you create a whole life like it's just little decisions that you make but that's one decision I regret and don't regret because I love having a kid but the shit I went through behind that motherfucker shit wouldn't do it twice my dad be asking me you want another kid I said fuck no but what I'm saying about this whole Jeff Hardy shit even with like okay even with women I have in my life now, if I wasn't the one brave enough to just take a chance and just approach them, I remember there was a time in my life, I think I might have been 17, where I thought I wasn't going to get no pussy. I was like, damn, I'm going to be a virgin forever. If I can hop in the time machine, take my black ass back in time, and talk to that little nigga like, listen, you think you ain't going to get no pussy, you're going to get more pussy than you can ever imagine. You're going to have more pussy than you, than you know what to fucking do with. But if I didn't take those chances and try to meet those girls, I don't know what my body count is, to be blunt with you. But at the same time, that's just how, like, approaching my first girl, once you break the ice with a woman and everything, and you get past that fear of actually talking to her, how that affects your life. Like, and each one of those girls affected me, and, you know, they made me smarter, and I learned something from each one of them. You know what I'm saying? And then eventually, the heartbreaks and shit I ran through led me to going through the red pill shit. I got on this red pill shit probably three years ago. I think the first videos I was watching was Minister Jab. Minister Jab, Lucario, Ron Wills, Alpha Male Strategies, which is kind of recent. Who else? There's one more. The one I'm fucking with now is Steph Click Scales, right? All these guys have impacted my life and made me look at the game completely different. You know what I'm saying? But if I didn't take these chances on just looking at it and taking a, you know, Google searching half this shit, I wouldn't know it. Really, I wouldn't. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm basically saying in this small premise is don't be able to jump off that top rope unless it's onto a ladder with another person at the bottom. You get the fucking point, man. It's been Ronald Williams for an outlet podcast, man. Y'all take a chance and learn some shit. Damn.